we feel we've mastered the abelian setting, uh, we would really love to understand the non-solvable, even the simple group setting. We're just piecing together some results about the, the solvable case. But uh, we have a few isolated results like this in the genuinely non-solvable case, but we're still at the very beginning of this great enterprise, uh, the Langlands program. Uh, thank you very much. What? standing around will only be showered by more boulders ready your horses on the double thank you very much for your exciting lecture you mentioned that one of the key ideas in the whole presentation was Frey's idea to construct an elliptic curve which is now called the Frey curve Frey told me at the time that he thought this was some kind of joke to reduce one unsolvable problem to an even more difficult and more unsolvable problem Obviously, he was proved wrong, but I would like to hear your idea on how much you perceive this as a joke or whether you felt immediately this was, this was realistic and there was a chance. So, sorry, who said it was a joke? I missed that. Frey himself. No, he did. He, said uh, he proposed it as a joke. Well, he, he felt that it was a joke to reduce something unsolvable to something even harder. Um, yes. The first one to really pick up on it was Euler. Um, because the proof for n equals 3 had not been written out. So Euler uh, did the case um, n equals 3. I think he made a mistake the first time, but I think he corrected it. Uh, so the next one was n equals 5, and that was a very, um, that was very tricky. You can try and do it the same way, but it's much more complicated. And I believe the story is that, I quite like this story at my age, that, um, Dirichlet was in his early 20s and did one part of it. The case n equals 7 